LUFS stands for loudness units relative to full scale, and an LUFS meter is capable of providing a measurement of perceived loudness within digital systems. This type of meter analyzes the audio you run through it, it performs some calculations, and then spits out a number below zero. The lower the number, the lower the perceived loudness, and the higher the number, the higher the perceived loudness. For example, a song with an LUFS value of negative 24 will sound much quieter than a song with an LUFS value of negative six. This measurement is important when comparing the relative loudness of two or more songs within your DAW, for example. Perhaps you're mastering an album for CD distribution and you want every song on the album to play back at a consistent perceived loudness level. You don't want one song to sound really quiet and then the next song on the album to sound super loud. This doesn't create a pleasant listening experience. The person listening to your album shouldn't have to play with the volume control on their listening device. There's some different types of LUFS values you should become familiar with when using an LUFS meter, such as the LUFS meter built into FabFilters Pro L2. Momentary delivers a continuously changing reading that reflects the current loudness level. Short term provides a slow changing LUFS level that represents the overall loudness of the current audio. And integrated displays a long term measurement that combines all audio analyzed by the meter since the last time you reset it. This integrated measurement can provide the overall loudness of an entire song. And it's the value of importance here because when people talk about loudness levels in general, they're almost always referring to integrated loudness levels. To increase the integrated LUFS level of a song, you need to boost the level of the song by increasing the amount of gain applied, and once the peaks of the song approach zero decibels, you need to use a limiter to increase the LUFS level further while avoiding distortion. To decrease the integrated LUFS level of a song, just lay off the amount of limiting you've applied. Okay, but what if there's no limiting being applied and your song's integrated LUFS value is still too high? Well, you can reduce the LUFS LUFS level further by reducing the amount of gain applied to the song. When you limit a mix, you smooth out punchy transient material like kicks and snares and increase a particularly unique quality of the mix, which is probably best referred to as density. The difference between loud sounds and quiet sounds is less significant, and elements in the mix start to feel compacted together. In moderation, this can be quite desirable and help glue the elements of your song together, but when you limit a song too hard, it can lose its punchiness and live or natural feeling. Based on the genre of music you produce, there's likely some sort of general standard when it comes to the amount of limiting you should apply. For example, a really dynamic recording of a symphony typically isn't gonna have much limiting applied, if any at all. Many people listening to this sort of music are interested in hearing the dynamics of the arrangement. That's a huge part of this particular genre. If you're listening to a symphony through a high quality sound system at home and you're in a quiet environment, it can almost sound like you're at the symphony. Genres like EDM, rap, and metal are quite different. The goal for many artists is to make their music sound aggressive and in your face. One way to go about this is by increasing mix density using a healthy amount of limiting. The byproduct of this is increased loudness. What's important to keep in mind here is that limiting a song doesn't just make it louder. It affects the dynamic range, squeezing together loud sounds and quiet sounds into a more compact level range. The overall character of your mix changes, and this heavily limited character is what people expect from certain genres. Take dubstep for instance. It's quite common to heavily limit dubstep songs, and if you don't limit your dubstep tracks enough, they're gonna sound a little off and as though they're missing some element that characterizes that genre. If you're trying to define yourself as an artist that belongs to a particular genre of music, this is something to take into consideration. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that two versions of the same song, one slightly limited to negative 14 LUFS and another heavily limited to negative six LUFS and then brought down in level to negative 14 LUFS will sound significantly different than one another. Take a listen to this audio example.
Both tracks are reading out at negative 14 LUFS, but version A sounds much more dynamic and loose, while version B sounds significantly more tight and controlled. I personally like how version B sounds more, given this particular type of track. However, I might not feel the same way about a folk song limited in this way. The big takeaway here is that you should limit your music to a point that sounds subjectively good to your ears, taking mix density into consideration, and then worry about LUFS levels afterward because you can reduce the LUFS level of a song without affecting the tonal quality of the track. Simply reducing a song's gain does nothing to the quality of the mix, but it does reduce the LUFS level. So the same is not necessarily true when it comes to increasing the LUFS level of a song. If a song is incredibly dynamic with peaks just below zero decibels, but the integrated LUFS level is something like negative 20, you can't increase the LUFS level without using a limiter. Otherwise, the song will clip when you turn it up. And remember, a limiter is going to change the density and character of the song. If you're mastering music for CD distribution, the songs on the CD aren't normalized automatically. This means that it makes sense to pick an LUFS target and make sure that all the songs on the CD hit that loudness target. This ensures that a quiet song won't be followed up by a loud song that destroys the listener's ears. What you should do is limit all your songs to a point that sounds subjectively good to your ears and then identify the song on the album with the lowest integrated LUFS value. This value is what you'll use as the LUFS target for every song on the album. Then all you need to do is reduce the output level of these songs until they match your LUFS target. Again, doing this doesn't affect the quality or density of these mixes, it just drops the final output level, which results in lower perceived loudness. Trying to match the songs on an album to a track with the highest LUFS value would be an issue because you'd end up being required to limit every song on the album further, changing the way they sound from a quality perspective. Some of these tracks may even start to distort if you over limit them. Streaming services deal with loudness normalization for you. For example, Spotify applies negative gain to your songs if they're above negative 14 LUFS, and if they're below negative 14 LUFS, Spotify applies positive gain along with a limiter with a 5 millisecond attack time and 100 millisecond decay time. As I mentioned before, you can't increase the LUFS level of certain dynamic songs without using a limiter, otherwise clipping could occur. So does this mean aim for negative 14 LUFS when mastering your songs for Spotify? Well, a lot of people are going to tell you yes, and that's probably because Spotify says to target the loudness level of your master at negative 14 integrated LUFS and leave a decibel of headroom to avoid distortion as a result of the transcoding process. However, Spotify isn't taking into account mix density, and that's where I have a big problem with this. If you like how your mix sounds at a higher LUFS value, then master it to that higher LUFS value. For example, you can upload a song at negative 6 LUFS to Spotify, and that's fine. Spotify is going to bring down this dense mix to negative 14 LUFS in a very clean manner by applying negative gain so no color is added. The only thing you want to keep in mind is that you should leave two decibels of headroom instead of one if you go over that negative 14 LUFS value because louder songs are more susceptible to distortion during Spotify's transcoding process. The real thing you should be worried about is not making your songs loud enough. Personally, I don't want Spotify limiting any of my music because I'm taking a chance on what the final product is going to sound like. I'd much rather limit a song to at least negative 14 LUFS myself and have full control over that process rather than rely on Spotify's limiter because I have no idea how it's going to sound. When you upload your music to a music distributor like DistroKid, you don't usually upload multiple versions of a song. You upload one version and it's distributed to a bunch of different online music stores and streaming services. Spotify is just one of these many services. YouTube normalizes to negative 13 LUFS, Spotify and Tidal normalize to negative 14 LUFS, and iTunes normalizes to negative 16 LUFS. You're not going to upload a different version of your song to each platform because first of all, that's a pain in the ass, and second, you don't need to if you just master all your music to at least negative 13 LUFS, which is the highest of these LUFS values. Reducing the LUFS level of a song is safe and easy, while increasing the LUFS level of a song can produce unpredictable results. When you get each service limiting your song in a different way to increase loudness, there's no guaranteed consistency. For this reason, it makes the most sense to reach for at least the highest LUFS recommendation amongst these popular streaming services and let each service reduce the LUFS level however they want. This process isn't going to affect the character of your music. On top of this, to avoid distortion introduced by the transcoding processes of these streaming services, Play it safe and leave yourself with two decibels of headroom when you export your songs. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you want to learn how to produce better music fast, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss out on tips, tutorials, and gear roundups. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Dr. Cross. Right.